Hello everybody and welcome back. Now, as you know, just lately we have been having some horrendous weather and it stopped a lot of us from getting out, me included. Even now outside the wind is gusting up to about 55 miles an hour and they have forecast more heavy rain so I can't see me getting out anytime soon. So I thought what we'd do for a change is talk about something different and I'd like to talk about lead or more to the point how difficult it is and sometimes impossible to date the lead artifacts that you dig up. Now some metal detectors prefer to dig up certain things they have their own favourites some people prefer gold and silver jewellery because they do a lot of beach detecting some people prefer Roman coins me personally I prefer the artifacts I mean, it's nice to dig a, a, a lovely coin up, don't get me wrong. But I do prefer the interesting little artefacts that you dig up, that you've got to do the research on and hopefully find a broad time period when they were made. Because you're never going to get an exact date, I'll tell you that now. But as I say, I love the little lead artefacts, the unusual things, the little statues and whatever. Now, you can take them to the experts and hopefully have them identified if you don't know what they are but in saying that even the experts can't put an exact date on them because at the end of the day they weren't there when they were made they can only give you a broad time period and to be honest with you some of the broad time periods that the experts give you are ridiculous in fact listen to this this is some correspondence I got back from the Portable Antiquities Scheme people quite a long time ago now. Now it's a spindle wall so we definitely know what it is um, and this is what they said in their report. They go on about it being a lead alloy spindle wall probably the word probable for a start of medieval date but it goes on to say Examples of spindle walls with raised lines and dots are often attributed to the medieval period. However, spindle walls and weights were cast locally in lead from the Roman period to the medieval and post medieval period and are very hard to date precisely. Well, excuse me, call me picky, but that's a pretty damn broad time scale. It could be Roman, it could be medieval, it could be post-medieval. Well, that's covering for going on about 2,000 years. So, as far as I'm concerned, that doesn't help at all. It goes on to say that the temporal details, the broad period is medieval, and then it says 1200 AD to 1600 AD. Well, that covers another 400 years, so what are we actually saying here? Are we saying it's Roman, medieval, post-medieval? Is it between 12 or 1600 AD? At the end of the day they don't know. Now don't get me wrong, I am not knocking them at all because they can only go on the knowledge that they've got and all the data that's available for them to do the research. So actually getting a date for a lead artefact, a precise date is almost impossible. And that's why, that's why I think it's so interesting, because you're never quite sure when it was made. You can only ever get a rough idea. And if you like reading the small print, which I do, right at the very bottom, it says, this record does not constitute an authentication of the object. It is only an opinion. That says it all. They don't know. They can only give you their opinion and a good idea of when it was made. And that is why lead is so extremely difficult to date. Now, the earliest examples of lead artefacts were small sculptures, small statues, if you like. And they were found in Troy during the Hellenistic period, which was about 322 BC. But the earliest known example of lead smelting 
was discovered in a grave inside a cave in the Negev Desert in Israel. Now, <laughs> opinions vary as to what the item actually is. Some experts think that it's a wand. Yeah, you heard me right, a magic wand. Now, who was using the magic wand? I don't really know. I suppose it could have been Gandalf or some mystical man or a magician or whatever. I don't really know. <laughs> Other experts think it was a short wooden sword. Now, why you would want to make a sword out of wood, I don't really know. But as I said, I wasn't there at the time, so I don't really know. Now, when I first saw it, something else popped into my mind immediately. When I first saw it, I thought you picked it up and you used it as a kosh. Because to me, that's what it looks like. It doesn't look like a magic wand. And I, it doesn't look like a sword. To me, it looks like a weapon with the big lump of lead cast round it. But to me, it looks like a kosh and a damn good kosh. But as I said, I'm not an expert. The only thing that the experts can agree on is how old it is. Because obviously the shaft was made out of wood, it's organic, so it, it can be carbon dated. They did carbon date it, and it turns out that it's 6,000 years old. So that's how early they were smelting lead. And probably even before that, they just haven't found anything yet. Now at 6,000 years old, it obviously predates the Romans, predates the Egyptians and the pyramids, that kind of thing. So it's seriously old. Anyway, have a look at a picture of it and see what you'll think. They've put a small pocket knife at the side of the object to give you an idea of its actual size. So take a look. Now, when the Romans decided to pay us a prolonged visit in 43 AD, lead production in this country took off in a big way, mainly because of the abundance of lead in this country. And it was obviously very easy to work with, very malleable, had a low melting point, so they ended up making absolutely all sorts out of it. And just as a by the way thing, the Roman word for lead is plumbum. And the Roman word for plumber is plumbus, i.e. a person who works with lead. Now, as I said, they made absolutely all sorts out of it. They made drainage systems, sewage systems, water pipes, features for fountains, small trinkets, statues. The early Romans even made lead coins out of it. The list is absolutely endless. Some Roman centurion soldiers even made lead knuckle dusters. They added it to paint as a base, which we did until not too long ago. But more interestingly, they added it to wine. It gave the wine a slightly sweet, salty flavour. When you dissolved the lead in the wine, it became lead acetate. Now, as we know, <laughs> the Romans drank copious quantities of wine and unfortunately it was quite poisonous. And some experts say that that's part of the reason for the downfall of the Roman Empire, all the fatalities due to lead poisoning. Although most historians and experts still say that the main causes were things like infighting between the various factions in Rome, all the corruption that was going on, the introduction of a new Christian faith, disease, etc. They were the main causes of the fail, if you like, of the Roman Empire. Now, it has to be said that they were extremely successful all over the world. I mean, at, at one point, there, were, there was no stopping them. They were so successful with the building work, the engineering work, etc. But at the end of the day, the downfall of the Roman Empire was because of the Romans themselves. They got nobody else to blame, just themselves. Now, when the Romans eventually decided to leave our shores in 338 AD, there was a bit of a slump in the production of lead items and artefacts. 
and it didn't really kick off again until the Middle Ages. Now, the Middle Ages roughly covers a period from about 1066 to 1485-ish. And during that period, lead production took off again, big style, because of the availability of lead in this country. And once again, they made all sorts out of it, including all the stuff you find as metal detectors, trade weights, spindle walls, tokens, gaming pieces, little trinkets, small statues, a whole host of things. But one of the things that people forget about is when you visit a medieval church or abbey or whatever, and you look at the beautiful stained glass, what do you think holds it together? Well, of course, it's lead. There were absolutely vast amounts of lead used in those stained glass windows up and down the country. Thousands of tons of it. It was so important during the Middle Ages, it's unbelievable. Anyway, that roughly leads me on to what I want to talk about next. And that is, a lot of metal detectors and other people think that just because an item that they dig up has got the beautiful white patina on it, that it's really old. Well, I'm sorry, but it's not. The white patina on lead has got nothing to do with its age. It's to do with the quality of lead. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you some examples of the stuff that I've dug up and I'll explain to you exactly what I mean. Okie dokie. Right, just give me a second and we'll have a look at the examples. Now, as you can see, I've separated the examples into two categories. All this lot up here have got very little, if no, white patina on them at all. Whereas all these items down here have got a beautiful white patina, apart from that one. So let me explain. This item here, as I'm sure you know, is a musket ball. Still got the sprue on it. Now it's not that old, probably from the 1800s, maybe 1700s, but a beautiful white patina. This item here I dug up just outside Chester. It's probably Roman, not certainly, but probably Roman. It's an eagle, and as we know, the Romans were very big on eagles. They had them on their banners, standards, etc. And because of where it was found, it's more than likely Roman. But as you can see, it's got very little white patina on it at all. And the reason is, this musket ball was made with lead that was extremely pure. And that's why it's got the beautiful white patina. The eagle was made with lead that had a lot of impurities in it. And that's why it hasn't got any white patina. It's got nothing to do with the age. The only thing that gives lead its beautiful white patina is the purity of the lead and nothing else. It's got nothing to do with the age at all. As you can see from that example there, that is definitely a Pilgrim's Ampulla, which was very kindly given to me by Martin from a Yorkshireman in Dorset. As you can see, no white patina on it whatsoever, but it's extremely old. The reason being, the lead was very impure. Same with this item, the spindle wall. <laughs> According to the experts, it could be Roman, medieval, post-medieval, whatever. No white patina. That's the reason. No white patina. So the lead was very impure. Same with all these items. Some of them are very old. Some of them aren't very old. But they haven't got the white patina. So the lead was impure. All these items here, beautiful white patina. Once again, some of them are extremely old. <laughs> well, according to the experts, they might be. Some of them aren't very old. This item here, it's got a nice white patina to it, 
and it's extremely old. It's a pilgrim's badge from the 1100s, worn by a man of the cloth probably going to the Crusades or the Holy Land or on their way back. Extremely old. White patina just means that the lead was pure. Same with all these other items. Doesn't matter how old they are, the lead was pure. This item here, for example, some metal detectors, detectors would dig that up and think, oh, look at the patina on that, must be really old. Well, it's not. The reason that we know is because very, very early trade weights, the hanging part of the weight was actually cast into the lead as a loop inside the lead or a hole going through it. This one has an iron hanging thing inserted into the top so it's not old it's probably from the 1700s that's what i'm trying to get across the white patina on lead has got nothing to do with its age it's all down to the purity of the lead now i've saved this till last <clears throat> not because of the white patina or the lack of the white patina it's just a very bizarre object it's obviously been made to look like an arrowhead but it's made out of lead so it's obviously not an arrowhead because a lead arrowhead would have been neither use nor ornament and i haven't got the faintest idea what it is the experts don't know and anybody else i know doesn't know either so what on earth they were doing, making an arrowhead out of lead, I will never know. Probably will never know. If any of you good people out there have got any ideas on what that might be, I would, I would gladly like to know. I mean, if you're watching Martin, you know your stuff. What do you think? Why would someone make a lead arrowhead? because it obviously is supposed to be an arrowhead. Anyway, that's enough of the examples. I'll just adjust the camera, my friends. Right, my good friends, well, <laughs> here endeth the story on lead. I hope it was of some interest to at least some of you. Um, and hopefully the next time you see me, I'll be out there doing some detecting. I don't know when, we'll just have to wait until the weather settles down. So anyway, as I said, I hope somebody found it interesting. And uh, I'll see you all the next time round, my friends. Hopefully with a metal detector in my hand and not a pencil. <laughs> Okey dokey. Right, I'll catch you all the next time round. And thank you very much for joining me.